What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So you saw the title. We're talking about 10 most comfortable sneakers. Now this goes as far as what I own. There's something I can tell you you won't see on here. I don't own any Hoka shoes. They just don't speak to me. I know a lot of you love the Hoka shoes. I'm not knocking them. They just don't aesthetically. I've tried multiple models on. I just, I just can't get down with them. So no Hokas in my collection and I don't own any Brooks shoes. Now I know they offer tons of great comfortable options in there. So I had to give you a little quick disclaimer. Definitely comment down below your favorites from Brooks and Hoka if you so choose, as well as anything that you really enjoy that's super comfortable for you that you may not see in this list, because I've got 10. Now, for me, it's not just super foam crazy, super max cushion underneath. It's the fit and the feel overall, as you'll see by just a few, really just one pick, our first pick here in this video. But let's get to what I believe are the 10 most comfortable sneakers that I own. Let's kick it. Starting with one that's a monster hype beast, it's super popular. A lot of people have pairs of this sneaker, and it is super comfortable. We're talking about the Nike Zoom Vomero 5. So the Zoom Vomero 5 is a traditional running sneaker from the 2010s era. Mesh build, super breathable, has a squishy cushion and Zoom bag setup. That's where your comfort really lies. The fit and the construction of this shoe overall all around on the foot is an extremely comfortable ride. These are so comfortable to wear every single day. You can still run in them. They were a performance running sneaker of their time. A lot of running sneakers in this video running sneakers are where it's at when you're looking for max comfort and i gotta say uh, i don't think it gets celebrated for its overall comfort enough it gets celebrated for its style but not enough for its comfort at number 10 we're looking at the zoom from arrow 5. my number nine pick may surprise some of you because this was number one for many years but not anymore not to me we're talking about the ultra boost this is the 1.0 So the Ultra Boost, while still a great everyday sneaker, this prime knit, super breathable, great overall fit. You have the Boost midsole that you can feel directly underfoot. They're super flexible, they're lightweight, they're great for being on your feet every day, but the times have passed it up. So there are other Boost featured sneakers in this list, this just isn't the king to me anymore. There was a time when I agreed with everybody where it was Ultra Boost or bust. They were the most comfortable now it's crazy to think that an ultra boost original model at least the homage the 1.0 to the original model has managed to fall at least in my list down to a number nine though i'll never knock an ultra boost they're definitely the way to go if you want all day comfort again breathability fit feel multiple colors they feel great underfoot it's just you know modern super foams pass them up and number nine the ultra boost 1.0 Moving into number eight, this is a modern twist on what we just talked about. This is the Ultra Boost Lite from Adidas. So some of you may be surprised to hear this because this has their light boost technology on it. I do find it to be quite enjoyable of a ride underfoot. Now it's the overall build. It's not just the foam underneath. It is the stretchy prime knit, the way the collar is designed on the Achilles, the actual stride to the shoe. It's just an overall more comfortable ride on my foot as compared to the Ultra Boost 1.0. I even surprised myself because I was, you know, doing side by sides, one shoe on the left foot, one shoe on the right foot to make sure this is how I want to rank these sneakers because some people are going to be like, oh, bro, I can't believe you ranked them like this. And some people will get it. It's a personal preference thing. And for me, 
the Ultra Boost Lite, surprisingly superior. Now, I haven't tried the new Ultra Boost 5X yet, but as far as the, the Ultra Boost Lite, this is the one to beat for me. I have the Ultra Boost 22 and 21 and Pure Boosts and all those goodies in the collection. But for me, this is where it's at. Underfoot cushion, it's pretty hard to beat. I actually have two pairs of this. This is the Ultra Boost Lite. At number seven, this has kind of been a go-to lately for our walks. While one of the slightly firmer rides is still cushy and squishy, and I actually enjoy wearing these more than everything we've talked about so far, this is the Asics Nova Blast 4. So the FF Blast Plus Foam is actually quite squishy, very forgiving. A lot of flex grooves the way it's built here on the bottom. You literally, when you step on this front ball of the foot, you feel it compress. You feel it give underneath. There's a lot of compression marks on this midsole throughout. I love to walk in these. They have a very good structured fit while not being super stretchy. Super cushy in the heel. The tongue, while not my favorite, honestly, these could be ranked a little bit higher if it wasn't such a kind of pain in the butt tongue. I mean, it's light, it's fine. There's literally no cushion to it. It bunches up really easy, but the FF Blast Foam, I'm a fan. I really love these modern Asics running, performance running shoes because they really are fantastic. While I don't run, I do like to go on long power walks for a few miles. We have a beautiful park next to where we live. And we love literally today at the recording of this, we went this morning, super hot outside. Uh, I didn't wear these, but the previous few days ago, the previous walk, we went on this. So if you've never tried these, maybe give them a shot. You might not think to go with the Nova Blast 4, but I'm telling you, you want some really good comfort, check out the Nova Blast 4 from Asics. Now moving into number six, this is where it's like literally, you know, drawing straws here to figure out what's most comfortable because they're all so ridiculously close to one another and the supernova rise from adidas i don't think gets enough love So the Dream Strike foam here is so cushy and responsive. The build to the actual upper there is so, so cushy. Plush pillowy feel around the collar. You have a plush tongue. This is definitely one of the main reasons it's above the Nova Blast 4. And this mesh design is really, really nice and comfortable and stretchy on foot. And you do have some structure around the toe, but it's it's not uncomfortable because it has a lot of flex to it. This Dream Strike, I'm telling you, the stride with this shoe surprised me. And I caught this on a sale. I just took a shot because Adidas has been running these sales as of late. And I paid like $38 for this shoe. And it's immediately, it's almost in my top five most comfortable sneakers in my collection. There's an argument for it. Like I said, we're like drawing straws here, trying to figure out number six to number one. The only clear definitive is the top three would be the top three no matter what but six and then the next two five and four you can interchange them if you've never given this a shot i was surprised with this dream strike foam i didn't know it was like that it's cushy and responsive thick man i could wear these every single day there's enough support in these there's enough stability to where it kind of outshines as an all-day shoe over some of the ones ranked above it honestly but at number six Surprisingly, the Adidas Supernova Rise. Now, number five is maybe a controversial pick because you got to have something Yeezy here because Yeezy models, most of them, are some of the most comfortable sneakers of all time. And to me, the king of the Yeezy Mountain for straight up pure comfort, the 350 V2 Compact.
So this is the slate blue with that kind of brown gum outsole. It's actually my favorite colorway. I have four pairs of these. So this is a super stretchy, crazy pillowy top. Like this is like thick, thick. Feels like an actual pillow on the top of your foot. Super crazy stretch. This is the only Yeezy model I would recommend going true to size. Super stretchy and then you are straight up, you can't take the insole out, but you are directly on the boost. So when you couple the underfoot comfort of the 350 V2, because it is the same midsole outsole setup of the 350 V2, and then you take the 350 V2 Compact's upper, this crazy soft stretch, because the 350 V2 is known to be kind of a snug, tight prime knit. This is not that. This is crazy stretchy soft. And when I say this is an actual pillow, it's like stuffed cotton inside this layered prime knit literally going from where the lace starts to where the lace ends impressive stuff you can get them really cheap right now when they keep doing these yeezy restocks like i said might be a controversial pick they're not the most popular but they're popular with me on my feet because you want to talk about crazy comfort for a yeezy number five the 350 v2 compact now at number four it actually pains me for this to not be ranked higher because they're kind of my favorite of the bunch. Like to go on my walks, these are kind of my favorite of the bunch. So this is the Asics Gel Nimbus 26. So here we're back to the well with the FF Blast Plus Foam, but here we have a large pure gel pouch in here that you do feel directly underfoot. There's a lot of pillowy, cushy comfort with structure in this heel and collar area, and there's just enough soft padding for an extremely, I mean, so much more comfortable of a tongue over the Nova Blast 4. It's not even funny. Like this is so stretchy and comfortable comparatively. This is a far superior model from Asics to the Nova Blast 4. And they're not far off in price point. They're kind of very similar. It depends on your stride and what you're looking for. They're different running models for different foot types and runners. But just for lifestyle and power, you know, long distance power walking for me basically. This isn't pure joy, a pure joy to have on feet. And I love the colorway. It's like a waterscape or seascape or something like that. It's basically a UNC blue. That's why I went with this colorway and I am here for them. These are incredibly comfortable under feet. I can't recommend the Gel Nimbus 26 enough. Seems like the, there's not much difference from the 25. So you can get, if you can get the 25, for a big enough discount, which from what I see, it's like a $10 difference. But man, if you want supreme comfort and just pure joy underfoot, the Gel Nimbus 26 is definitely that. Now into the top three and at number three, this is where it's gonna create a little bit of controversy for some because this is a lot of people's number one now. And I got this before I got what my actual number one is. Because what used to be number one is not number one anymore. We'll get to that. But number three, the Fuel Cell Rebel 4 from New Balance. Surprising, right? Yeah, I know. I, I feel the same way. I love this shoe. This is great. This is a phenomenal shoe. I love this synthetic structure. Super thin, crazy breathable mesh. Love the high-vis yellow safety orange with white and gray. The launch colorway. I love this shoe. And it's super cushy and responsive. I have the, uh, the Rebel V3. I'm a fan of the Rebel line. This is... Immensely comfortable, great every day. I love the high visibility colors. Great summer shoe. This is a phenomenal summer shoe. But you'd be surprised 
how some things fit. Everything's a, a preference. And surprisingly, I have two shoes in my collection that I do deem more comfortable than this, which is mind boggling to me because how can something be more comfortable than Fuel Cell Rubble V4, you might be asking, because a lot of other content creators have put it as their number one. Am I crazy or are they crazy? It's neither, honestly. It's just a preference thing. Again, the top six can be interchanged out. The top three, four through six can be swapped around, and one through three in this list can most certainly be swapped around. But yeah, it, it pains me to do this because... I really do love this shoe. I'd honestly like to get another color. I'm debating on getting another color. They have an Action Bronson collab coming that I might take a stab at getting. That might be the next color I get. Action Bronson has a collab coming on this sneaker. But Supreme Comfort, most people's number one. The New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V4. In at number two, it used to be the king. It used to be the unquestioned number one. And I thought it was going to be number three behind the rebel v4 and then i put them on each foot one on the left one on the right and walked and i was like nope i still think it's more comfortable than that the invincible run three zoom x from nike This was the king for so long. Literally, on t uh, a couple walks ago, I wore the first version. I have multiple colors of the first version and the second version. The navy is the only color I have of number three. And this is still just a pure joy to wear. Now, the collar and structure is a little different from previous models. I'm not, I prefer the fit of the previous versions a little bit more. But the underfoot cut cushion, even though they're not molded exactly the same, this Zoom X midsole is the truth. Not the unquestioned king of comfort anymore, but I definitely won't shake a stick at anything that has Zoom X foam in it, no matter how thin or thick, because walking around on these is a pure joy of life. They're very responsive for as squishy and cushy and soft as they are, they immediately rebound. That's one of the beauties of Zoom X. It reacts like Zoom. It's, Zoom has always been known for its responsiveness. It compresses and rises back up. It's all about responsiveness and feedback. Where here, you get supreme responsiveness and feedback with a nice, squishy, cushy, comfortable ride. The fit has, is definitely wide footer friendly. As you can see here, you don't necessarily have to go up half a size. If you go your true size, you will have a little bit of room if you want a tighter fit. I would say down half a size, but you'll be good true to size unless you have some crazy wide foot or super narrow foot. Uh, this is some good stuff. Just enough cushion in the tongue for me to never gripe. I do like the cushiness to the tongue. It's not, you know, skateboard shoe kind of padding, but compared to stuff like the Nova Blast 4 and the Fuel Cell Rebel V3, that had a tongue like the Nova Blast. I don't like those super, super paper thin ones, but a little bit of padding like this goes a long way. Good bit of padding with a nice heel counter for some, a little bit of stability. Not the most stable thing out there. You have this heel clip going around, but used to be number one. For a lot of people, it still is, but for me, it's number two. The Nike Zoom Invincible, Zoom X Invincible Run 3. And for me, number one, I actually have to take off my feet to show you. I think it's the unquestioned, most comfortable shoe I've ever put on my foot at the recording of this video. It is the New Balance Fresh Foam X 1080V13. So this is the white and coastal blue colorway. I wanted something more neutral with subtle hits that pop. Different little hits of color. I love this. This engineered mesh is super comfortable. It is very cush cushioned in the collar. This Achilles pillow looks like it might dig into you, but no, it's just super, it, it's like just plush. It's an actual little pillow. It's super flexible. It's so comfortable on your Achilles. Again, you have just enough padding, a very soft tongue, just right. There's no pressure points anywhere. 
it's wide footer friendly but they have multiple wide foot sizes if you have wider feet than what this offers and then this is an actual marshmallow under your foot super cushy not a strong rebound this is if you want more rebound go with the invincible run 3 go with the rebel uh, v4 those rebound those are much more responsive this is soft this is plush this is supreme comfort this is the number one most comfortable sneaker in my collection i highly encourage getting your foot in this so you can experience it because i can almost guarantee you're going to want a pair it is that comfortable number one the new balance fresh foam x 1080 v for 13. well that's my 10 maybe not the 10 you were expecting maybe you agree maybe you don't again it's just my particular 10 definitely comment down below what is the most comfortable sneaker to you and again, I don't have Hoka's and Brooks. They don't really speak to me. I have nothing against either one. I don't really like the styling of Hoka. And I've been meaning to get some different models of Brooks. I just haven't gotten around to it. In the future, I most certainly will. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We've got plenty of daily content, sneaker content here on the channel. The occasional hat content and fitness content. Of, there's bound to be something for you with your hobbies here on this channel. And I appreciate you guys for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.